Oh, that is such a question. Um, but I think, you know, I'm only pretending to be torn over my answer because it has to be Elizabeth I. And she so often is my top pick, but for good reason, let me say. Um, and her coronation was just a masterpiece. And like all the best coronations, she left nothing to chance. Carefully prepared, uh, she consulted her astrologer, Dr John D, about the most auspicious date for the coronation. He chose January 1559, so it was bitterly cold. Uh, but Elizabeth didn't care for that. If Dr Diaz said it was the right day, that it must be. And she went to town with this coronation. And what I love about it is this is one of the clearest demonstrations we have of Elizabeth's loyalty to her late mother, Anne Boleyn, because she modelled her coronation on Anne's. She even used some of the same designers. She adopted the same classical theme. She even had Anne Boleyn on display, a life-size model of Anne Boleyn with Henry VIII, the first time Anne had really been seen or displayed in public since her execution. So that was a big statement to make. And Elizabeth made so many other statements. There were these little pageants or, or vignettes, little plays along the processional routes that sent out messages about this being a new beginning. Gone are the bad old days of her half-sister Mary. We're no longer Catholic. We're Protestant. Uh, and, you know, of course, the main theme, though, is about Elizabeth's legitimacy. She knows that people think, or at least half of her subjects think, she's a heretic, she's illegitimate, she shouldn't be on the throne. So she goes to town with celebrating her family tree all the way along the processional route. That is very much the clear message. And it has gone down in history as this great triumph. And she did win people over, unlike her poor mother, who ended up ridiculed on her coronation day. Elizabeth's had the opposite effect. And like so much else, uh, Elizabeth on her coronation day proved herself the mistress of public relations.